Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Ear to ear, there's good news coming guys. I've got a lot of things to talk about. We've got consensus reports, we've got our allotment, we've got uh, industry news, we've got new products that are coming out that we haven't talked about. I've got a fun new project on the channel that I'm gonna be doing with the Escalade, and then I also have some cool design things that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about in this specific episode. There is a lot to go over. So get your pen, get your pad of paper out, especially if you're on my list or you're getting an order or you're starting to design your vehicle because we've got a lot of fun things to talk about on today's episode. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I, I got lots of stuff to talk about. We got some really exciting things. I, I really want to start off with some breaking news uh, from the Arlington plant. They have been keeping it secret, but they've been developing a Blackwing Escalade, a V. I, I don't know the exact name of it yet. We'll wait for marketing to put their spin on it with some nomenclature, but I have a feeling it's gonna be called the Escalade V Blackwing. And uh, there's a Corvette connection in there. It does have a Corvette Z06 engine in it. It has the LT4 though, the previous C7 generation, and the same type of powertrain that you'll see in our CT5 Blackwing, which I'm very excited about as we have one getting built next month as well. That this is something that I, I really love. Like, you know, how crazy is it to think um, that the, the L87 uh, 6.2 with the 420 horsepower is already something that people are saying, you know what, it's great, but it's not there compared to some of the SVR Range Rovers or the AMG um, Mercedes Benz. We're still coming out with them. On, the, on that side note about the AMGs, they're not even building AMGs for another year, especially in the North American market. So we're coming back on top and we're coming out with our first ever performance version of the Escalade and I'm extremely excited about it. I have a spy video on my um, YouTube channel in the shorts and then I also have a reel on my Instagram of the footage of it. And one thing that I wanna note in particular about this is it's not just us slapping a supercharged V8 in this and calling it a day. There is suspension upgrades on this. In particular, what you'll see in the launch or the full wide open throttle acceleration that's in this video is that the rear end of the suspension hunkers down and the front end stays uh, rigid. That is like a launch mode that is available on this suspension uh, as an upgrade um, for the V. So I'm very excited about that in particular. They did also some work with the magnetic ride control and my little birds that are out there in the world now, thank you to you guys that reach out and tell me about information that you find. They saw six Escalade Vs driving on the 401 highway coming from Windsor, they were saying, and it looks like they're doing some cold weather testing. So there are Escalade Vs out on the open road. If you're in the Ontario region in Canada, you may see an Escalade V as there's six that I've confirmed are in the country. And um, one thing also to note about that is it means that there's uh, a very good chance that production is gonna be going right at the beginning of 2023 uh, with the model year change. So one of the things that I wanna get right away in starting to talk about, and it's also gonna relate to the Z06, is expectations and timelines. And I know that I've said for a long time that I don't wanna spread any rumors or use any um, thing that I've seen on the internet just to create uh, news. But once in a while, I'll give you my expertise on what I think is the situation. And I'll let you guys be the judge if my logic is, is right. I've been doing this for long enough that I can kind of under, understand how General Motors operates when they're releasing a product. And I'm gonna give you guys some information that I think is gonna be very relevant in terms of when you can expect the Z06 and when you can expect the Escalade V. Now the Escalade V is gonna be a 2023 model year and what I have here is our consensus. So on Thursdays, which is today, and if you guys haven't already been um, informed, I'm gonna to try to do these episodes on a Thursday because we get told what the build dates for these vehicles are, they get told, they tell us what vehicles we're gonna get for the week, and they also tell us our constraints on a Thursday. So Thursdays is a very important day for us in GM, and it makes sense just like I've been doing with the channel when something arrives in on our lot and you wanna come down to see it, I inform you the same day, uh, and with my kind of filming how I do it, where there's a little gorilla style, 
on the ones and then we're doing the higher production value, it's not very hard for me to pre-record a lot of the things that I see during the week and then also do a live component of it and then upload it on the Thursday once I get this stuff. So it's Thursday morning, I'm gonna be uploading this in a couple of hours and you can expect to see this type of format moving forward every Thursday just to give you guys a heads up. If you're on my list, this is gonna be very helpful so that you can know where you are and where you stand. As my list is getting out of control with the amount of awesome people that I have to, 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 to inform and it's way easier on this format. So we're talking about when I can expect some stuff and the consensus is gonna be really good at that because what this is doing is it's telling us what we're gonna have in terms of the ETA or the, the target production week for those specific models. So for example, the ones that we're gonna be looking at in this episode is the Escalade and the Corvette. So if we were awarded a lawman for an Escalade and a Corvette, which we were both awarded, awarded for this week, we can expect that production is gonna be for February the 14th for Escalades right now. And for Corvettes, the production is gonna be for March the 7th. Now there's two things that I would take away from just that alone. Escalades are absolutely killing it right now. Anything out of Arlington, you guys all need to give yourself a massive pat on the back because the production capacity and the production levels that we're seeing out of the Arlington plant are, are unprecedented. And I'm not trying to be a drama queen and, 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 and you know, give commends to GM where they're not due. This is something that you need to be commended for. Right now, they're averaging about 1,600 Escalade Tahoes and Yukons a day. Just to put that into perspective, our goal at the Corvette facility is 185 a day. They're doing 1,600 a day, one every seven minutes. I believe that's what they told me. One every, I gotta do the math on that. I'm a car salesman, not a mathematician, so don't hold up that that math didn't work out. But there's 1,600 a day. I also had some news that over 20,000 Tahoe Escalades and Yukons were just released from quality control. Over 100 car carriers alone we're leaving the plant yesterday uh, to distribute these Escalades. And I can attribute that from the time that I'm placing an Escalade Tahoe or Yukon to the time that it's arriving, it's shorter than it was even before this pandemic happened. These things are being pumped out like none other right now. And you know, just for an example, an Escalade that you're gonna see today, we placed it right at the beginning of December and it's already here. So that's less than seven weeks from the time that we placed the order to the time that it arrived that I'm getting my, my vehicles. And I'm getting a lot. I'm very proud of that. I've always been a Corvette you know, aficionado and I've never really put an emphasis on Escalades at the beginning of my, my public uh, social media career. But I've, I've been very diligent in the Escalade world and I even had the marketing director of Cadillac Canada used to call me Escalade Morgan because I would really emphasize a lot of my time and energy on on that specific model and we've been rewarded for that because how you get your allotment is based on your previous year's sales. So when the Escalade was sitting around on the lots in the previous generation, I was ordering and asking for more and I was selling every single one and GM is rewarding me that for rewarding me for that right now with us averaging about 10 to 15 Escalades a month, which is something that I'm very proud of and that a lot of major dealerships even in the states could not compete with in terms of the allotment value that I get. So tooting my horn a little bit, brushing off the dirt on my shoulders. I'm very proud of that. And it means that I have a lot of fun projects that I can do. Now, I have some news for you guys in terms of when you can expect this V to come around. I already know that they are planning on shutting down and tooling over to the 23 model year in May for the Escalade. Now, in May, uh, there's probably going to be a very slow rollout for the V, but there is a lot that we can take away from that. Right now, if we're already having our orders being built for February, that means that there's still quite a bit of time left in this specific model year. Um, but in terms of actual time in the year, it's only about four to six months away. And I already right now have about four to six months of a wait in terms of how many people are on my list. I have about 40, 47, 48 people on the Escalade list right now. We're going through it at a quite aggressive pace, but that right now is about four to six months of a wait. So if you're trying to join my Escalade list, Anticipate that right now, you'd be getting the tail end of the 22 model year. And if you're looking at getting a 23 model year, this is the time for you to start putting your name down and expecting that that's the model year you're gonna get. Now, in terms of the Z06, this is gonna be something that I think is gonna become extremely controversial, but hear me out on it. Right now, if you were to get your order accepted, which I did get one Corvette for the week, it's gonna be built in the week of March the 7th. Now, we've been hearing rumors and I also, um, would have to agree that it makes sense that in May, they're gonna be changing the model year over for the Corvette as well as the Escalade and everything else. 
That's normally some the time that we normally see a model year change if they're gonna do it in the early uh, half of the year. In the second half of the year, it's usually in September or the end of Q3. So um, to see something that's starting at the end of Q2 is not a surprise. It's been done before and um, I'm not I'm not gonna rule that out, but I would say that it, it's very high on my list of being true that there is gonna be a May. Where I'm going with this is that if we're at March the 7th right now for orders that are being placed, there's still about two months of production between then and when they're planning on retooling the plant for the 23 and the Z06 that we're gonna be getting our orders. And I know that a lot of people are starting to get concerned with the Northern states and provinces in Canada not getting in a lot of Corvette allotment, but keep in mind, they're probably building them for the Texans right now and there's still two months of production that we still haven't got our allotment for that you're gonna see coming in the next few weeks. So over the next two months, I think you'll be seeing a lot of uh, April and May builds that we'll be getting in the Northern states in the Northern months. And I hope that that comment and that suspicion doesn't age like milk. But that is, in my opinion, a very good timeline on what to expect if you're looking at getting a vehicle for the Corvette. And if you're interested in looking at getting a V, it's actually not that far away. You know, uh, to think that right now, if you were to put your order in with me, this would be kind of your first opportunity to get one because of where I, you are on the waiting list, not that bad. Now, in terms of constraints, um, there was a significant amount of, uh, you know, interesting options that were on constraint for this specific uh, allotment. Um, another thing that I want to note is if you're calling your dealerships right now and asking them for their consensus, they not may be on the ball as, as much as I am. Uh, or as our dealership is in terms of getting everything out on Thursday. So give them a little bit of time. There's a lot of things that we have to process and get through on a Thursday morning. So maybe reach out on the Thursday afternoon as they've had some time to go over the information themselves. For example, this week we did not get a lot, but normally when you get back from a Christmas shutdown, the first week of production is normally a very small amount as they're ramping back up. And then traditionally the second week of production, which will be for next uh, the next two weeks that we get, so the last two weeks of January, are usually a very large amount of stuff. And that is reflected in the amount of allotment that I got. I got one ESV Escalade, and on that Escalade, you have only two Platinum Escalades that were awarded for the entire country. So we got one Escalade ESV, a long wheelbase version, and we've been told that only two of the Escalades that were awarded for the entire country are gonna be a Platinum spec, which gives me some insight that there are very low uh, Platinum allotments for the country. And there's only one Sport Escalade that was awarded for the entire country of Canada, um, which is still a pretty decent market share. Let's say you know the market share is the same size as New York or Texas or California in terms of what we get. Um, you know, I think that that is a safe strategy. The fact that these things are being pumped out at such a fast level, I would say that it kind of balances it out. Yes, we didn't get a windfall of stuff. Yes, there is not a lot of the higher trim levels that are being awarded for this week. I wouldn't take it too seriously because they're starting to ramp up after a Christmas shutdown. And also the things that are being built are getting produced extremely quickly, hence February 14th target production week. If we're January the 10th or 11th right now, that's a month away from being built and then another two to four weeks for it to get shipped depending on where you live in the country or uh, in the in the continent. Now, I also did get a bunch of Equinoxes, which is very nice because they're real, right around the corner. I did get a Crew Cab HD, but one thing that I did note about that is that there was zero diesel engines available for the HD uh, Silverado and Sierra for the entire country of Canada, which is good insight on what it would also be in the States. And then for my Corvette, um, there is no engine appearance package, not a not a end of the world situation because you can get the carbon fibre options added on, but you can't get that light on the top of your engine appearance package um, installed uh, at an aftermarket date or an, at a later date. And then there's no high wing, which is not a, a big issue. You can get that installed at a later date either. So I would consider that a win in terms of the allotment that was uh, given to us and the constraints that we have right now are nominal and you know except for the engine appearance package if you're getting a hardtop convertible you don't even need to worry about that because you can't even get that so um lots of stuff to talk about i'm very excited about uh the v in particular uh, i'm excited to start learning more about uh that specific model especially related to the suspension i've heard that the exhaust on it is something that very uh, to be noted about that it's a very good exhaust for it um, and the one question that I'm going to put out there, because I'm always trying to be the devil's advocate on what I'm trying to find out about it, is will they make a Blackwing version that has a platinum interior? 
And the reason why I'm asking that is because on the previous black wings that we've been getting, the interiors have not been uh, on the same level as a platinum. For the CT6, for example, um, you couldn't get a platinum interior on the black wing. It came with a lower level interior. Um, and I'm not saying that it was base or anything. It just didn't have you know leather wrapped on the dash and some other features like the DVD system that comes out of the rear seats and stuff like that. So it was interesting to note that on some previous black wings like the CT5 and the CT6, um, that they, they kind of did not go all out. And I'm wondering if they're gonna do that for this. I do have a Blackwing CT6 that is gonna be coming in soon, and I'm excited to be able to do another featurette on that once I get it in on trade. So we're gonna go to the lot now. I've got some things to talk about on the Escalade, and you're also gonna see some things that I've been doing out and about on the lot over the last week. All right, guys, blunder of the day. It's negative 12 outside, and just as a public service announcement, don't leave Diet Cokes inside of your Escalade overnight when it's negative 12 out, or this is what you can expect. Thank God I chose a white interior. Got some fun ahead of me cleaning this one out. I don't think it was that much damage, but I was like, what the heck is going on? And then I looked over here, I already threw out the can that had exploded. I think I got away okay, but this is gonna be interesting. I drove to work with the windows down just to make sure I could keep everything frozen. Cause, uh, that stuff is gonna be a nightmare. Thank God it was Diet Coke and not regular Coke because the sugar would have been nuts. Okay, Escalade time. We've got lots to talk about on this one. This just arrived yesterday and the client actually messaged me saying, hey, I'm, I'm on my way to Quebec for a couple of months. Uh, has my Escalade arrived in? And I was literally sending him a video showing that his car arrived in. So within a day, we had the entire team here at Finch Chevrolet working on this project. He had a 19 premium luxury. He traded it in. He made $13,000 in equity from his vehicle. And he got into this Platinum Escalade. This is a 2022 and this one has a lot of features that I haven't really seen for a long time and I'm very excited to start seeing them come back on. It's a Platinum, it's a Sport, it's in crystal white on the outside and it has the base wheels that you get with the Platinum on it with the Sport. Now we took the tires off of the trade-in, we put them on this, and then he has a beautiful set of 22 inch Vossens that he's gonna put on in the summer. Therefore, excuse me, <laughs> just had a little burp there. Therefore, he doesn't have to worry about buying an extra set of tires because he's gonna take the original tires that came off of this and put them on his 22 inch Vossens. So he was cost effective in doing that. It cost him only about four grand to do that. And now he has two complete sets. Now. Lots to talk about on this. This is a whisper beige interior. And as you can see with it being a platinum, there's a lot of very beautiful accented pieces on here. And I've got this on here to make sure that I don't get it dirty and the technicians that were working on it don't get it dirty. Because if you see here, this is linen. That's suede in a light color. One of the things that I'm recommending more than anything on these, if you're gonna get the whisper beige interior, and it almost should be something that GM and, and the dealership Sue Standard is, is scotch guarding it. There's a fabric protection program that we offer at the dealership. And when you're gonna get an interior like this, there's no question of a doubt that you're gonna get it dirty. You guys saw uh, what I did to my Escalade today with the, the can of Diet Coke. You can only imagine how disastrous that would be if I had this kind of interior on my vehicle with the Platinum. Even though I had the Whisper Beige, it was in the level down and there's a lot less uh, areas and, and materials on it that are as um, susceptible to exploding Diet Cokes at negative 12 Celsius. So the, the fabric protection program is without a doubt something that I would suggest that you look at getting. It's a nominal cost and especially if you're going to be able to keep your interior looking that much more incredible. This is like having a black car. A black car looks absolutely impeccable. You know, when it's all done up and it, and it looks good, like that Escalade over there that's, that's black, it looks great. But once it starts being driven and it looks like the XT5 that's beside it, it goes from bad to worse. And I could say the same for this. This, this interior is just absolutely top notch, but if it gets dirty, it has the opposite effect. So this interior protection program is definitely something that I wanna talk about uh, if you are gonna get one of these vehicles. Now, another thing, I don't want this to be a sensitive topic, but this person was very lucky that there was a window of opportunity to get Super Cruise. This is the first 2022 that I've had with not only Super Cruise, but night vision. And then it also has 
the refrigerator cooler. One of my favorite features. It's only been on since I started this video and you can already see that there's frost that's starting to form from that. I just took it outside of the shop, hit play as soon as that train was done. So in about four and a half minutes, it's already started to get frost developing because it's on the second setting here, which is for the refrigerator. And then this, sorry, for the freezer. And then that's the refrigerator setting where it's on number one. So very, very cool to think that it's that aggressive in terms of how it can get cold. If you're gonna get this interior, I'm jealous. It's a very cool interior, but make sure you get some fabric protection programs put on it. Um, we are gonna be looking at ceramic coating this as well once it gets back from its trip. So we said, go have your new Escalade, go have fun with it. And then when you get back, we'll protect the interior and do the uh, exterior with a ceramic coat as well. We normally like to get those done right when they arrive because we do offer a very aggressive price point on that because there isn't any paint corrections that we really need to do that, that's that aggressive. You know, normally it takes about four to six hours to get a vehicle prepped for ceramic coating. And if it's coming in from the factory, there's a lot less that we have to do and therefore we can offer a discounted price. Now I've, I've stockpiled the monochromatic logos. So even though they're on national constraint right now and you can't get them, I got them. Uh, the running boards and everything are standard with this. The puddle lamps are also standard because it's a platinum. And uh, in the back, we've got the very cool mats that I can't speak uh, enough about in terms of how uh, thoughtful and creative they were to have them stuck onto the back here. As you can see, this one's in its up position and then this one's in its down position. But when I fold it up, they come in just like that. This one hasn't been stuck down properly or it would have stuck in place. There's a blender right there on live. Let's try that again, we'll put it down. And there you can see it's completely covered when it's all the way down. Now this also has the Whisper Beige floor mats inside of here. You can get three different colors for the mats. There is a darker one um, called Parchment. This is the Whisper Beige floor mats. And then there's obviously a Jet Black. Surprisingly enough, there is not a Whisper Beige mat for the rear cargo. So there's only one option and this is it. So if you're wondering if I made a mistake by having these ones in Wish for Beige and this in Black, that's the way it came. I hope you guys that enjoyed that segment. We're going to go on to some more adventures that I have going on this week. Stay tuned. Got some fun ones coming for you. All right, guys, let's get at it and start talking about some of the fun projects that I have going on in the Escalade world right now. Got HMS Cars and Crosby over here for moral support. We've got this premium luxury non-platinum and then we have a sport non-platinum and they're both in the shorties. We've got two major projects to talk about today or two, two, one, one thing of advice in terms of design and one major fun project. And let's get to the, the fun project right away. I've got an awesome client that has a Blackwing already. She has a CT6 Blackwing 2019, one of the first ones. And uh, she's going to be trading it in for this. But we thought, you know what, in light of the V news, we can do that too. She likes performance. She likes her style. Oh, we got a train coming out here. Shorty, it's just a little short one. She likes her style. She also likes her performance. She also has a convertible uh, hardtop C8 Cor Corvette. So, you know, if we're going to be trading in that Blackwing, I can't just give her this Escalade and expect her to be happy with that. So we're going to make our very own Finch Chevrolet Cars and Crosby Escalade V until the 2023 model year comes out and then we'll get her into that Blackwing there. So with that project, there's a lot of fun things that we're going to be doing to this specific model. We've got six piston brakes going on this. We've got the cutback exhaust. We've got a cold air intake system that's going to be going on this. I've got a set of Vossens that are going to be going on here with a very cool bronze finish. It's going to be a very cool model. We've got the logos on here that we're going to take off. And if you haven't seen them, we'll show you on HMS Cars and Crosby here what we're talking about. We're just getting rid of that maroon, that gold and that blue and making it so that it all kind of stays consistent. And in reality, maybe we could have kept that logo because we are going with a bronze set of rims. But this gold and that bronze isn't you know, enough to make that message get across. And they're definitely not going to be the same color. So a little hint on what wheels are going on here. I normally don't give that away, but obviously with it being winter right now, you're not going to see them on the finished product before I deliver it. And we'll have to give you an update on that at a later date. Now, also, I just told you all about these fun little things that we're doing, but right off the bat, I got to give you a disclaimer on the cold air intake system. It is still it's available. The part exists. I already have one on order, but the calibrations are not going to be available until March. So if you're going into your Cadillac dealership expecting to get a, 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 a V just like I'm trying to do with mine with the cold air intake and the exhaust, the calibration component of that for the 2022 model year has not come out yet. If you have a 2021, you should be safe. 
until March, they told us as of yesterday from General Motors that um, it's not gonna be available. So just to kind of give you guys an idea of what, what I'm talking about here, the hardware for the cold air intake is one thing, but if you give it in this situation, I think it's about 17% more air to the engine, it's smart enough to know that there's an excess amount of air and it doesn't really know what to do with it. So it actually starts neutering the engine and cutting off air to it. And you actually do the opposite effect because these things are so smart these days. You can't just give it more air and expect it to know what to do with it. You've got to explain it and tell it, hey, listen, buddy, we not only let you poop out that air from the exhaust a lot faster with that kitty cat back, but we've also got a cold air intake system that's going to let you breathe a little bit better so you can you can increase your output on some things i'm not going to get too technical because i'm just going to make myself look like a fool but there might be something to do with the compressions the air fuel mixtures i'm not sure in particular but i do know that you got to tell your l your l86 which is the engine code for this this block uh what's going on now on this one over here this is a premium luxury and it really gets across um something that i've been talking about to people on my channel um about you know how to get around something that you don't like and this is a really common one and it goes in line with a theme for interiors that we we've, we've gone a lot out about there is some people out there that do not like the wood that's on the jet black interior platinum and just for reference where i'm talking about it there's a walnut wood that is in all here and here and in here it's like a brown you've seen it and if you're trying to black your vehicle out, you're getting an Onyx edition, you're trying to turn it into a V, having walnut wood in your sport Escalade, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense. So we went with a non-platinum and then we loaded it up. And in this situation, the client really likes the saddle brown leather, which we call brandy in the Escalade lineup. And I'm not, I'm not really gonna um, comment about what my personal preferences are, but if I was gonna get a brown leather, this would definitely be it. I love the diamond stitch on here. You do actually have to pay for an additional um, upgrade from this. This is the only option interior that you can get where you have to pay on the non-platinum versions. And uh, it does come with a very nice full Napa grain leather and it is um, not available on the platinum. So if you're looking at getting a saddle brown leather and you wanted to get a platinum, you can't do it. But you can get a non-platinum and then load it up. So we have the AKG 36 speaker sound system that's in here added that to the list we've got the STI which is the driver assist package or also known as the touring package which comes with your air ride suspension it comes with the soft closed doors whoops that wasn't soft on my behalf it comes with the soft closed doors it comes with the LED lights all throughout the running boards on here it also has the entertainment system added on to this one it has night vision, it has super cruise, it has it all. It even has a radiance package. And why did we put a radiance package on it? Well, Vossen doesn't make chrome and it doesn't also have a very cool uh, grill upgrade. So on the um, Escalids, if you're able to get if, uh, a traditional design language, if you're wanting it to look as traditional as possible, Cadillac actually knocks it out of the park with every single package. And there's really nothing aftermarket that you need to do about it. So this is gonna get a nice set of 22s with a multi-spoke chrome aluminum wheel. And then we're gonna get the Govano mesh chrome uh, grill on here as well. And that one will be as cool as possible with the brandy interior, but not being a platinum. If you're wondering just for a quick reference on what that means that you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get a leather wrapped dash and you're not gonna get a suede line headliner. So all of this, well, this is the door frame, sorry. All of this here would be wrapped in leather and all of that would be wrapped in suede. So that's the sacrifice that you make. If you are wanting to get the right leather interior, by all means, I think that that is the way to go. And we've done that on that one. And we're gonna be doing it on this one because we don't like that walnut that comes on the Escalade Platinum. And I'm not trying to make a hit on General Motors. I've, I've been hit, hit, nudge, nudging for a while. And it sounds like, from what I'm hearing from a couple birds, that they are going to be changing the interiors on the Escalades and there will be three new options. I don't know if they're replacing any. All I know is that they're getting some new interiors and I'm going to leave it at that because this is, you know, I've got standards to keep up. I don't like to spread around rumors and this is technically a rumor. So that's the last time I'm going to be bringing it up until we find out. And it's not that very long because it's only May until we have to wait for these to be built. And as you guys just heard, these things are pumping out fast. The, the, the cycle time from when we tell you you can get one to when it comes in is extremely quick. 
and we're killing it. This is only two of the five Escalades that I think we got yesterday, four or five yesterday. They're just coming in like none other. I know that I, I started out with this channel being very Corvette related, but I'm sorry guys, but these Escalades, they just keep coming out. And when the ground looks like this, I can understand why General Motors isn't giving me a lot of Corvettes. You know, right now the week of production is March the 7th. So it still would look like this on the ground, or at least I think it will, um, around third week of March when those ones would arrive in that we're getting today. And that means that we've got another couple months before uh, driving season really comes about and, th and that's when they would be producing those. So have faith if you're a Corvette person on my list, they're coming. If you're an Escalade person, times have never been better. This is a really great opportunity. If you don't like the interiors that you have, we can find a way around it. I hope that gives you some insight. If you're wanting to get some performance and, st and style on your Escalade, we're doing it. We're gonna be doing it on this one, so stay tuned for that one. If you're interested in learning more about what I do on a day-to-day -day level, check out my channel. There's a lot of stuff in the previous days. This is gonna be one of the ones that we do on a Thursday, and then we have more high production value episodes, like the one where I took HMS Cars and Crosby to PEI, um, and we're going to mix those ones in between. And then I still have some stuff in the Cars and Crosby's vault that I haven't uploaded from the summer as well that I'm saving for a day that I don't have anything. But it's really hard to do that right now when there's so many things that are coming through the pipes with General Motors. I'm going to start talking about Z06 soon as well. I've been holding off, but I've been learning a lot. And I'm excited to start passing that information on to you guys. I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada. And you're watching Cars and Crosby. Happy motoring.